Jenny Carlson Show, everybody. Before I introduce this week's guest, who I am very excited about, I want to say a quick thanks to the following sponsors. MidFirst Bank, Rose Hill Builders, the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, Our Blood Institute, Bob Moore Auto Group, and Oklahoma Ford Dealers. Drive your best in Oklahoma Ford Dealers today for the best deals on Ford's full lineup of trucks and SUVs. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. Well, like I said, I am pumped to be joined this week by a guest who some of you know is an OU softball legend, and you might know her as a one-time college softball home run queen, or maybe you even know her as the first commissioner of the women's professional fast pitch, WPF. Now Lauren Chamberlain gets to add guest on the Jenny Carlson Show to her illustrious resume. (laughs) (laughs) Lauren, thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, Jenny. You've been like one of my favorites to connect with over the years as play- as a player and now as a businesswoman and just in, in Oklahoma life. So really happy to be here. Well, I am just pumped. We're right in the middle of football and we're going to talk some softball. There's nothing better than that. Let's start with the news a little bit. Not necessarily breaking news, but you announced earlier this summer you were stepping away from the WPF. Why was now the right time for you to make that move? You know, I think in life, we all have those moments where you just know that it's time to do something different. And that's pretty much what happened with me. Um, No hard feelings at all. It's I'm really proud of what we built and what we were able to um, accomplish together and getting two brand new professional teams on the map, especially the Oklahoma City team. It's been awesome to see, you know, right in my literally my backyard and 15 minutes from Hall of Fame and to know that there was professional softball, you know, played there this summer was uh, the really one of the highlights of my career just as a whole. Uh, so very thankful for the memories, thankful for the opportunity and excited to see where it goes from here. I want to talk a little bit more about professional softball in a second, but let's talk about what's next for you. I've been seeing something on Twitter called LC Management Group. I assume that's you. What, what's going on here? Yeah. So actually, before I took the commissioner role, I had launched LC Management Group and what started as you know, just being a a go-to resource for softball players specifically in, um, you know, managing their NIL. uh, What do you charge for camps? How do you write an email? You know, what do I caption on this post? I I had been organically doing that throughout my career um, because we were really on the cutting edge of social media when we were back at OU. So we had to kind of, you know, figure it out and scrap our way through. um, And it ended up working out for me. So uh, what started is, you know, giving advice to my peers and and helping them kind of navigate that situation. I'm like, let's, you know, create something official and be a one-stop shop for players to come if they want financial advice, if they want to set up an LLC, um, that kind of stuff. So now it's turned into and blossomed into something, you know, we're all really proud of. I had to step away from it due to a conflict of interest uh, with WPF, but coming back into it and seeing just how it's blossomed and how it's grown. Um, we manage, you know, recognizable athletes like Jocelyn Allo. Uh, I'm still a client, which is awesome. Jada Coleman's in there, Nicole Mendez. So a lot of, um, you know, really well-known softball names and some of, you know, everybody's favorites here, especially in Oklahoma. Um, but then we also trickle out Mary Iacopo, Jen Schroeder. There's so many really, uh, Kelsey Stewart. There's so many really awesome softball names. Uh, we also represent, you know, Billy, uh, over at OU football. And uh, there's a couple other in the queue that I think people are going to be really excited about. So it's awesome to be a part. I'm happy to be back in the mix with those guys. Obviously restarting or getting re uh, you know integrated into LC management and NIL has come on board, name, image, likeness. Um, you know, for a lot of, a lot of college sports fans, that's kind of become dirty words. You know, they don't quite know mm-hmm. what to make of NIL, but How have you, how have you tried to help athletes currently navigate through the NIL scene? You know, again, we, I want to make it as easy as possible for them. I think that's the goal was you focus on softball. Like back when I was playing, it was, we had to focus on softball and manage all that stuff. We just had to kind of go with the flow and see what happened. Uh, But there's such a concentrated amount of time specifically for female athletes and their collegiate athletes to maximize that you know, platform that they're on, which the NCAA and especially OU provide. So when they are busy winning championships, I want them to focus on that. Um, and I want them to maximize their earning potential while they have that window. So it's, uh, you know, I know the fans sometimes have a little, you know, they're a little wishy-washy with it. They don't know what to make of it, but it's really not theirs to understand. It's, it's, it's the athlete's ability to uh, kind of get back what's always been theirs. 
uh, and really get a, a piece of the pie and get their cut. I think it's a fair share and it's really exciting. It's a good time for athletes. It sounds like you feel like NIL may in some small way may be righting a wrong that has been, mm-hmm. you know, sort of wronged on athletes for college athletes for some time. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, when athletes say that, we are also acknowledging that we are getting some of us scholarships. We also acknowledge that, you know, we may have, um, you know, certain things given to us that it's a little bit easier. Like I, it's always kind of that matchup between like the regular student and then the student athlete. Uh, but there are so many, the sacrifice that you make as a student athlete, uh, it is a full-time job. And, and unless you're in those shoes, you you can't simply understand the pressure that is also ensuing, but then also seeing, you know, back when I was breaking the record, seeing the tickets that were being sold, seeing, you know, we didn't have jerseys at that time with our name on it, but could you imagine all I wanted to do was sell the bat that broke the record. I just wanted to, you know, say it's up, who wants it? you know, highest bidder. And that opportunity now for players to really capitalize on those moments is so big. And that to me is a win. And the more NIL exposure and the more, um, you know, wins that we can get those athletes, to me, the better, more organic and authentic performances you're going to see because they feel like they're being compensated for their work. I want to backtrack on something you said in a second about the pressure of of situations for athletes, but NIL, had it been around when you were playing? I mean, how much would you have made? I mean, you could have I mean, made all sorts of money. I'd be calling you from an island somewhere. I would be tanning. I would have a margarita in my hand and we would be chatting about something else. I'm telling you, it was. I, I think back to it and it's like, just because I know my hustle spirit, like I know that that entrepreneur that's already, it was in there before I even you know, thought it was. My mom is um, a CPA. She's a partner at her firm and then my dad's in sales. So it's like, I had that financial understanding and then I also had that salesman uh, like I had both experiences and I was so blessed to have, you know, been exposed to that really early. So I just wanted to hustle and I had to do it a little differently. And maybe after that, you know, senior season concluded, but, um, just so happy that athletes finally get to experience that now. Yeah. You you mentioned a second ago, the, the pressure that, uh, a lot of college athletes face. And I think that pressure is maybe we don't necessarily think of it as much on the women's side of, of sports, but, Like you said, you know, this OU softball program, you can look at OSU as well, you know, big crowds, big expectations. What is that? What does that look like? How is that? And maybe it hasn't changed since you were there because a lot of that, I mean, we saw a lot of the same things when you and uh, Kalani Ricketts and Shelby Penley, you know, when you guys were coming through, but how does all of that, how does all that strike you now as you see the rise, especially of softball and these teams in the state? Yeah, it was a little different uh, for us back then, because again, we were right on the edge of social media. Like I was in college, I believe it was 2011. I was heading into college when social media really was big in Twitter and all of that. And so we didn't necessarily, we we benefited from those viral moments and we benefited from like the hype of social media. Uh, But I don't think people were as bold or as vulgar or as just no empathy. (laughs) Like that is a different ball game. I think for these athletes now, the pressure that they feel to, um, you know, maintain this image on social media to also be an outstanding player to get good grades and then also show that they're making money. I mean, there's so many things going on for them. So I believe that the pressures are different. I think on the field, the pressures are always the same. We had to win. That was our mentality. And that changed. I mean, freshman year, we kind of back when I was there, we established ourselves and we were like, okay, we're back on the scene. The year before, when I was a senior in high school, they had gotten back to the World Series stage. So knowing that, you know, it was kind of win or bust by the time I was a senior, it was like, this is a failure if you don't win. So that pressure is still the same for OU softball. We know that everybody expects that, not a national championship, but when we, uh, you add all those external uh, factors in that they have to deal with now, it's a completely different ballgame. And I definitely do think that Things like LC management or just people and support groups and a tribe around you uh, really is helpful and beneficial for these athletes. Is that pressure? We know it's different because of the OU softball machine that is right now. But do you think it's different across the board for female athletes? Do you think issues of pressure, mental health, some of those things are different that for the female athletes and for the male athletes? I think that we both you know, whether you're a male athlete or a female athlete, there's both sets of pressures and not one's not greater than the other. 
Um, they're all just different in comparison. But I think when you're talking about female athletes specifically, I remember going through body image issues. There's so many, um, you're expected to look at, you know, someone on OESI, I forgot, I think it was Jada. Yeah. I was just talking with Jada and, um, saw one of her interviews and she was talking about, you know, as, as a female athlete, fans will expect you to look banging in a dress, but then also expect you to hit the ball 400 feet. And it's like, pick one, you know, what, what do you want from us? And, and that's just women in general. I, you know, you could go far beyond the softball field and there's always a comment being made on your image as well. So there is an extra set of pressures that I think the female athletes face that go beyond the field. Um, and also, you know, add in money and, and trying to make a living, especially moving from a collegiate athlete to a professional athlete. Um, yeah, it's, it's a challenge, but I think that our women are built for it. The first time Jada did a press availability last season, I could tell she was physically more muscular. And mm -hmm. I can't remember how I said it, but I stuck my foot in my mouth, I made it sound <laughs> bad. And I said, oh, no, no, I yeah. think you look great. And, right, and right. she was obviously very proud yeah. of, the, of what she had done in the offseason. I thought she looked mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's especially with OU. And that's something that's changed, I think, from when we played to now you'd say machine and it's like physically they are a machine. If you look up and down, like one through nine and the bench are ready to bust ass. Like it's crazy how, how just strong and athletic they are back when we did. I'm like, I didn't lift a, a weight in high school. I didn't. I'm like, what is the weight room? Like I, I just didn't go in there. I thought it was for people that like loved fitness. You know what I mean? And then I get to OU and a rude awakening with those 5 30 AM, six o'clock workouts and back there throwing up on the football field on the turf. So it's, uh, it's really cool to see, you know, what they're able to do athletically now that can just take them to the next level. I feel like we're naturally segueing towards OU and college softball. But before we get there, I got to ask a couple of quick things about pro yeah. softball. Hit me. Uh, ob obviously, two leagues right now. WPF went to four last year. You mentioned Oklahoma City adding Texas, also getting a team. Mm -hmm. Where do you feel like professional softball just across the board is right now? What, what's your what's your feeling on just the the ground on which the sport stands professionally? Shaky. I, I mean, it's always been that way. And I think the good thing is that we're moving in a direction where we're getting new people involved. We're, we're seeing new faces and fresh faces in softball that are willing to really push this thing forward. Um, I don't think it, it, that it's going to continue to be uh, segmented. I don't think that it's going to, you know, continue to be shaky. I think that we are all on the same page. It's just about sitting down as a group and saying, you know, we need to all be at this table and we all need to put our foot forward and move it forward. Um, but I do encourage the players. I think that the players themselves have a lot of power. And unfortunately we lean on players to make shifts uh, when like we just talked about, they already have all of those pressures on them, but I do think that there's power in the athlete's voice and um, the quicker we can all come together to kind of make this thing go the better. You, uh, you mentioned earlier what a thrill it was for you on a personal level to get that team in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Um, playing at Hall of Fame Stadium, that, that mecca location for softball in this country. Did you have any, I, mean, I have to think there were some goosebump moments. Like, what was it like oh. to see Oklahoma, you know, Oklahoma City spark in, in your league last summer? Yeah, the, when I showed up to Hall of Fame Stadium and I saw, you know, just over 3,000 people in the stands and, and that lower level almost fully booked for a seven o'clock pro game during the summer, you know, in the heat of it, I was like taking a video and I'm just like this, like this buzz is what I've wanted for professional softball and, and the whole team at WPF and everybody that was involved in the spark, they all wanted that buzz. Um, if you're a college softball player, specifically at OU, you know, that buzz, you know, that there's just this hum and it's an energy and it helps you play. And when I was a pro player, we didn't always have those crowds um, and it just depletes your energy a little bit. It's hard to turn that up when you don't feel that rush of the crowd watching you and the fans really excited. So anytime you can create that um, atmosphere for a player, you get better results and then you just see elevated softball. That's all I wanted uh, for Oklahoma was to really see that next level of play. Yes, OU is fantastic, but picture OU players and then times them by you know four teams and, and you're playing every night of the summer. So it's, it's just a, an awesome blessing that I, you know, played a small part in getting that to Oklahoma City. Yeah. The, uh, the buzz and the uh, sort of fervor of softball seems to have really changed the dynamic in the state. 
um, whether we're talking about OU and the, the the machine that it's become, OSU rising to a top five team, even the high school level has oh, really yeah. started to see an explosion of top level players. What's just your sort of like I ask about the, the professional game. What's your sense of the overall state of the sport in this state? Oh, it's it's like growing like crazy. I mean, if we were to put up a chart and just see the growth pattern, it just continues to go year after year. And you know, podcasts like this, Jenny, where there's opportunity and spaces to speak about softball, it's huge because then it just becomes normal. Um, and we're seeing the demand for softball. We're seeing the demand for, you know, the conversations that Kenny Gajewski and, and Patty Gasso and their sound bites are becoming, you know, these huge Twitter hits. And that's a, those conversations are important. And whether people agree with things or not, it's like that is keeping softball, you know, at the forefront. And that's that's creating that sort of media news and that really big, you know, hit just like football has. I mean, it's 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 funny because I think people still find it very controversial when it comes from a women's sport versus a men's sport. But it's just sports. It's just the heat of the moment. It's the drama. It's all of those things combined. And I think you're going to see more. Uh, of the female sports side, especially softball in the state of Oklahoma, continue to be just a hot topic. We got to talk about that bedlam battle that's oh, yeah, really maybe. brewing in a <laughs> second. But but I wanted to go back. You were talking about when you arrived at OU, it was kind of the first push of the escalation of OU softball. You know, crowds ramping up, uh, scoring ramping up, championships mm-hmm. like starting to accumulate. Did you have a sense just because of you know, you talked about buzz earlier. Did you have any sense just with the buzz that you guys built with those teams, just where that program could go? Did you have any sense of that? I think we knew the culture that we built was so strong that that would withstand the test of time. And that's just, uh, that's coach Gasso. That's Patty Gasso. You know, she's a force. And as long as she was at the helm, I'm like, it's going to be good. <laughs> We're It's going to continue to shine. So I think it's just like a torch. I mean, OU softball in any program, really, it's it's a torch being handed down and down and down. And when you start getting, um, you know, if you do your job as a team to then turn over those recruits and, and get those recruits to come to these big games, and then those recruits end up signing, and then it just continues that torch being passed down. So uh, I think you know, I expected the success because that's all that we were demanded of. We, we, it was always, you have to be successful. And we rose to that challenge and we actually thrived in that uh, pressure cooker situation. And that's just continued to stream down. So it's really exciting to see where the program is now. And it's, it's only going to keep rising. Talk about pressure cooker, that home run chase that you went on there at the end. I mean, I'm like, how long ago was that? I I keep getting reminders. They're like, it's been 10 years since your national championship. I'm like, what? (laughs) A decade? God, it's crazy how time flies. I mean, the, the, that home run go, um, gosh, there was just all sorts of storylines within that. And you lived obviously right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. How did you handle all of that? What do you, what do you remember being key to, you know, continuing to go out and playing great softball. I had always just really excelled in those moments. And I looked forward to that chase. It wasn't, Oh God, I have to chase. And I have to, you know, like, I I don't know, like, and of course there were moments of doubt and that's, that's human, but I really, if there was a goal and I was trying to hit it, like I was just steadfast and persistent and I really enjoyed the hype around it. I'm not going to lie. It was, it was exciting. Um, Was I relieved when it was done? Yeah. Oh my God. I didn't want to talk about it anymore. I didn't want my teammates to have to deal with it anymore. I I just wanted to move on. But um, that time was a very exciting time. And and I'm thankful as a human to get the opportunity to experience that type of pressure and that type of, um, you know, feat. There's not many people that can say that they experienced that. And um, it's taught me a lot about myself, perseverance, what I am capable of. Um, And it's, it's kind of, created and forged that, that mental fortitude that I have now. So it's, it's been really helpful on my journey. Not many people go through that, but yet another sooner goes through it just a few years later (laughs) with Jocelyn Allo. She's chasing that. I mean, I can only imagine what's going through your head. Obviously somebody chasing it. There was probably a thought at some point it would happen, but a fellow sooner that had to just be surreal, Lauren. Yeah. Gosh, it was crazy. And just cause it's Joss, like That was, it wasn't a shock. It wasn't a surprise. We all knew it was like this kid from Hawaii is coming over and she's, you know, state 
champ wrestler and and she's strong and she's just she hits the ball like you used to and i can tell you from my mouth jocelyn hits it 10 times farther than i do it like we can just call it what it is like she's a tank she's so strong and to see you know her come in as a freshman and and have a conversation with her and say forge your own path you know you create your own name you're not the next lauren you're jocelyn and she did just that and um, to see her capitalize not only on that opportunity, but, you know, become a professional and uh, act as a professional and really, um, you know, she's creating change in the softball community. She's taking that torch that we talked about and, and continuing to push it forward. So couldn't have happened to a better player, uh, couldn't have happened to a better person, always in her corner. It was a really cool kind of full circle moment experience. Yeah. If the torch gets passed, it feels like OU softball is like a bonfire right now. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, the thing is on fire. Yep. <laughs> it is. It is gone crazy. So uh, this dominance three in a row. I'm sure the expectation is another this season. People will probably think, you know, this is uh, Patty's got a team to do it again. There's been a, there's been some talk social media about the dominance of OU softball. I want your take on is 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 there anything bad about OU softball as it relates no. to the sport of no. college softball? No, and you're just a hater if you think something's bad about it. Be be better. That's my response to it. Just be better. Get better. If the portal is available to you, be better at getting transfers. If you you know, if there's an opportunity for you to have more practice and get stronger in the weight room, go do it. That's what OU's doing. They're not there's no cheat code. There's no uh, you know, I I get almost defensive and I want to, you know, protect and go to war for coach Gasso because I see so much shit. Honestly, Jenny, I see so much online that is just frankly not true. And this woman is doing her job and she's dominating her job. And we don't have a problem when we see it from Nick Saban or we see it from anybody else. Uh, we have these dynasty teams that are on the men's side that are just fabulous. And it's, it creates memories for people. They're like, Oh my God, remember that run? Remember that Cowboys run? Remember this? Remember the Lakers run? And it's like, how, how are we not soaking all of these moments in? how are we not, uh, you know, just thriving in this excellence that's happening? I mean, I'm pumped. And if you're not pumped, it, you don't have a pulse. If, if you're not appreciating what's happening, you're not a true sports fan. I don't like when people hate on the dominance of OU softball and I'll stand up for it every time. Seems like that they have raised the raised all boats. If you look around college softball, there's a lot of really good teams. I understand people will say it's OU's to lose for the time being, but I see a lot more really good teams out there, Lauren. Yes. And uh, again, the needle only gets, you know, you push the needle forward and you raise that ceiling higher. Someone's got to do it. And if it's OU and it continues to, you know, raise that bar of excellence and, and that competitive drive from other teams, then let's go. And I, I welcome that. And I, I think that OU welcomes that. And I, I, I do think that college softball as a whole has gotten better because the sport has demanded it. It, it can't just be OU. Like we've got to have other teams that are pushing forward. And you've seen that over the last couple of years, specifically, especially with OSU two rising. I mean, it makes for really fun matchups and it's cool just living in Oklahoma and being like, we've got the best softball here. It's really cool. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it pretty good. All right. We got to talk about the bedlam battle that's uh, raging now. Even in the off season, we can't get enough of college softball around here. <laughs> this, with it's obviously so <laughs> Kelly Maxwell uh, getting in the portal. You mentioned the portal for, portal earlier. Mm -hmm. Patty going after the best players, regardless. Um, it feels like uh, you know, and and that story becomes front page news, big talker. I mean, it's sort of like when Jordy Ball left. That has to, I mean, I, I get that people want to see both, you know, rally on both sides, but sure. the fact that softball is that big a story is, is amazing. Does that, is that, is that sort of a wow for you? Yeah. I always wanted those conversations around softball and I always loved it when people got a little like feisty and got a little hot and spicy with it because it's just entertaining. And if we want our sport specifically softball to grow, you have to have that entertainment factor. I mean, especially in today's society, you could just pick up this thing and, and be entertained. So we, we got to set ourselves apart. So I don't mind that. I think it's awesome. Anytime there's a little bit of drama, I think it creates um, a better atmosphere come game day, but the players understand that it's just a game and, and this is a, a matchup. And while it may be a little more heated on the outside, this is just, it's OU versus OSU. And I think as we head into SEC territory, it's really cool and special to um, create that lasting memory and that lasting, um, you know, impression of what Bedlam was. 
I swear to everybody watching, Lauren and I did not talk about what I was going to ask her ahead of time, but it feels like you're leading me to every next question, Lauren. This is really kind of weird. We've always been on the same page. <laughs> but that leads to it. You, you talked about the players sort of see this as, okay, this is a rivalry. Mm -hmm. Something that we as, as onlookers in the media have sort of sensed in recent years is this whole idea of rivals players maybe don't see it as heated as they used to. Right. You know, obviously mm -hmm. Kelly transfers from OSU to OU. I don't, she's not going to be the last. She's not going to be the last inner rivalry player to transfer from one school to another, whether it's OU Texas or o OU OSU or whatever. Are rivalries just not as big a deal to players anymore? You know, I think it depends on who you ask. I know that there are still some players specifically on OU that you'll ask them about a matchup and they're like, just foaming at the mouth. They can't wait. Um, others, it's like, hey, this is a genuine a genuine respect. I, I know I always felt that when we had a rivalry. I mean, of course, week leading up to it, I'm, you know, headphones on um, just in that mo almost like that Michael Jordan where I'm like creating these like, you know, false narratives just to pump myself up. You know, there's always those types of things. And you appreciate that feeling as a player. But at the end of the day, when when that um, you know, last out is recorded, it's all respect between the players. It's all like, thank you almost um, for giving yourself to this opportunity. Like I honor you and I appreciate you for like making yourself available for this, this fight that we just had this battle. So especially in the softball community, women, you know, I think that's moved in a different direction is that it's a little bit more supportive and like, we're all trying to, you know, find our way in this world. Um, but you will see, I mean, the more that the media hypes it up, I bet it's going to get a little bit more spicy. I think we're going to see a little bit more, which I'm like, don't, I mean, I, I feel bad saying this, but like throw a punch. I don't care. <laughs> let's see it. WWE, let's go. Like we need a little bit more like fight. You know, I want to go back to those old days where it was like, you just never knew what was going to happen. Someone gets beamed. You don't know if they're going to charge them out or not. It's like, you got to be ready for anything. I have never seen a softball brawl. I think that could be interesting. I, you know, I honestly, like now that I'm like not in the position I, I'm like, maybe I could say it. Like I would, I would be pumped. Like, I'd be like, that's what we needed. Like we just needed a good, just throw down. Yep. I Coach is going to kill there, me when she hears. Say, there's <laughs> no part of Patty. Come in and just like start throwing. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no part of Patty Gasso or Kitty guy asking. It's like, yes, let's do that. Fight, fight. I know. Gosh, I'm going to get a call after this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before we let you get out of here and start taking all the angry phone calls from Patty Gasso. Right. <laughs> three lightning round questions. All right. Sure. Let's start with this. Excluding Marita Heinz Field at OU. What's your fa been your favorite place to play over the years? Road Stadium, Alabama. I've always said that never changed. That atmosphere was incredible. Coach Murphy really knows how to rally his fans behind him. And I've had some of my, you know, coolest wins and toughest losses at that field, including my last, my very last game as a Sooner was on that field. So always appreciate a good uh, arena, a good uh, fighting territory. Yeah. I love that. Okay. What about pitcher? Best pitcher you've ever gone against? Mm, I mean, Monica Abbott was always a good one like that. It took me, I, I kid you not two years to figure her out in the pro league. <laughs> I was like, Oh God, this, my, my, my normal is not working. I need to figure it out. And once I was able to make that adjustment, it became extremely competitive, but you know, I'll tell her this all the time, like appreciate those, um, you know, those competitive moments. It made me rise. And anytime I have to go deeper as a hitter and I have to like, kind of take that level up a notch. Um, that's just mad respect. She was awesome. Okay. I don't know if you have any, uh, hard evidence on this, but longest home run you ever hit. Oh, uh, I can't tell you the, the footage on it, but it was in Arizona. It was at ASU and the air is thin out there. And that ball flew. I mean, it like trampolined off my bat. I'll have to go check. I'm going to, you know, I'll call Coach McKay. Shout out to Coach McKay, my hitting coach back in the day. I'll call him and see if he actually got something on it. He probably had, still has a, a note somewhere. When you hit it, you're like, that one's not going to land for yeah, a while. Went into, yeah, a little pea size by the, by the time it was out there. That was a fun one. I love it. I love it. Well, I hope this is not our last conversation, Lauren. I hope you're a regular guest on the show. We'll got lots more to talk about. I'm That's sure. So, so thanks. I love that. I'm amped. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for your time today. This was outstanding. And uh, to everybody that's watching, if this is your first time hearing or watching the Jenny Carlson show, please be sure to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And did I mention you need to subscribe? Yes, subscribe. Also, <laughs> if you like what you hear, 
please leave a review. And remember, you can find all my work at selloutcrowd.com or jenny-carlson.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next week.